Hey guys, my name is Sean Kaminsky. The lady on my right there is my wife, Natalie, now Kaminsky. We are excited to be newlyweds. Um, we just got married at Dreams Las Moreas. I'm getting a lot of questions about the wedding and our experience and, and a non-filtered version of everything that kind of went down from check-in to check-out. Um, so I figured it would just be easier to put together a video, hopefully to answer as many questions as I can, because um, there's a lot of different events. Uh, overall experience was, was amazing. Um, we did um, our ceremony, our cocktail hour, our reception, all at Arbolito Beach. Um, which was great. It, it was beautiful. It was very, very hot. But um, I think I should go step by step, to, uh, and then I'll get to that point uh, when we're there. So we flew from Miami to LIR, Liberia Airport. It was a pretty short flight. It was two and a half hours. The flight there was great. There was no hiccups. A little inconvenient for us. We don't really like to travel to Miami. It's about an hour and 15 minutes from our house. Um, but we made it there. There was no delays. Every Everything was pretty silky smooth. Uh, we landed in Liberia on time. We had, um, I guess, whoever booked our room, uh, booked the transportation from the airport to the hotel at the same time. Um, and that was pretty flawless. We we looked for the gentleman that, that had, I think, oh, it was Amstar. He had a sign that said Amstar. We checked in with him. And there was actually nobody else on our flight that was traveling from the airport to the hotel. So we had our own private vehicle without having to pay for it. It took us, there was no traffic on the way there. I think it took us just about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. The drive, contrary to what people might say, it's not that bad. Uh, I mean, there's definitely some, you know, some uh, wiggly roads, windy roads. Uh, but it wasn't that bad at all. Everything is paved and it's a pretty smooth trip. So we got to the hotel. Our flight departed from here at, uh, I believe it was 10 a.m. Because of the time change, we landed in Costa Rica around noon. And I think we got to the hotel between 2.30 and 3 o'clock, something in that range. Um, our wedding was on Sunday, March 17th. Uh, our rehearsal dinner, of course, was the night before on Saturday. We checked into the hotel on Thursday. Most of our guests, aside from one, checked into the hotel on Friday. We had a few people that checked in on Saturday. And like I said, one person that checked in uh, same day as we did on Thursday. And that's kind of how we preferred it. We wanted to sort of kind of get to know the property because we had never been there before, which is what we essentially did on Thursday and Friday morning. And then our guests started to roll in Friday afternoon and then, you know, kind of throughout the second part of the day. So uh, we got to the hotel, we were greeted with a welcome uh, champagne, which was nice, and then we made our way to the preferred lounge, which is where our check-in was. Um, at the preferred lounge, uh, if you guys don't know already, there is a bar in there, obviously with every single alcohol that, that's at the hotel, including preferred liquors, and then on the opposite side of where you would check in, there's little hors d'oeuvres throughout the day. So for breakfast, there's hors d'oeuvres. For lunch, there's hors d'oeuvres. And for dinner, there's different hors d'oeuvres. Very small little plates. Um, and you can kind of come in as you please and, and grab something. And um, it's a small little bite. Now, I don't know the specific names for everything, but we had noticed that there was a huge piece of grass, um, piece of land there in front of the preferred lounge. And that was a beautiful venue. Really, really scenic, really clean, you know, green, green, green grass. Um, and we kind of thought that, um, not thought, but we kind of wish that our ceremony and cocktail hour were on the beach at Arbolito for photos and for all, you know, for all the festivities. And then our actual ceremony, uh, not ceremony, sorry, reception would have been in front of the preferred lounge. It was just an, an easier space and a larger space for sure to kind of navigate through. So food for thought on that. So long story short, we um, sat down with the gentleman at the front desk. And at that point, we were kind of trying to organize because in total, we have right around 50 guests, including children that were coming, which is right around, I think, 24 rooms. 
Um, so of course our goal, well, I, I think out of the 24 rooms, 22 were all preferred rooms. So we were trying to get everybody, our entire wedding party as close to each other as possible. Um, and that was obviously for the hotel, it's a bit of a challenge depending on availability. And I think the hotel is sold out for the most part of the year. Um, but he put us in building 8A, which was not Arbolito Beach. It's on the other side, um, but very, very, very close to the beach. Like there's actually a little path in the corner where it's a cut through and takes you directly to the beach. Uh, so we booked a preferred master suite with a swim out. Um, and then our a bunch of our other friends booked um, just regular swim outs, preferred swim outs. Um, so what he was able to do, fortunately for us, is we were able to block off the entire swim out section of the first floor in that building. So we were on the corner. The preferred master suite is on the corner. I think there's only there. I know for sure there's only one per building. So we had that corner suite and then our guests had the remaining, which I think I want to say it was like six or seven rooms that were all swim outs, regular rooms. So our wedding party had the entire swim out, which was amazing. It creates a lot of privacy. You know, once you're done with the main pool, we kind of retire to our rooms and we can just float around and have drinks and, and kind of chat it up. Um, so that was really convenient, really nice. Our room was was large. It was more than enough. My wife and her bridesmaids got ready in our room. We did not do the the spa. I know there's like a bridal suite in the spa. We did not do that. They had more than enough room to get ready in our master suite. And then the guys got ready completely on the other side in the same building in one of the smaller rooms. Like for the guys, especially as you can tell, I have no hair. Uh, it took us like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to get ready. Um, so yeah, at that point we had checked in. We were super happy that he was able to get everybody together, which was awesome. Uh, we went to the room. I don't think we did much on Thursday. We were pretty tired from, from traveling. Uh, we went out to dinner. The one thing that I can't say, unfortunately, you do have to figure out a lot of stuff for yourself at the hotel. Uh, in my opinion, the front desk doesn't do a great job explaining everything because, for example, the French restaurant is not open every single day. There's only certain days where the French restaurant is open. Um, so you kind of have to figure that out for yourself. I know inside the preferred lounge there was like a digital board with information. We didn't read it, but maybe the information was provided there. We just didn't see it. I figured that somebody would communicate that with us, um, but unfortunately he didn't. So you, you do have to do a lot of research for yourself. There's two main buildings, like multi-floor buildings, right? More than two floors. Um, the preferred lounge being one, and then the main building, which is where the non-preferred rooms are, that's where all of your restaurants are, right? That's where the Italian restaurant is, that's where the sushi is, the Japanese, your breakfast buffet, and all that kind of fun stuff. That's in the main, main building, and within that main building, you have the piano bar, you have the gym, you have the spa, I mean, everything is there. Um, so that's in the main, main building, but not where you get dropped off when you're making your transfer. So long story short, um, as far as the restaurants go, I know there's been mixed opinions. Um, in our opinion, the food was not terrible. The food was not amazing. <laughs> it was it was very mediocre. You know what I'm saying? We... Um, we didn't have any stomach issues. We didn't, I mean, there was really no issues with the food. It was just, you know, mediocre at best. Our two favorite restaurants for sure were Italian and the French restaurant. Um, those were our two favorites. Everything else, kind of so-so. For lunch, I would highly, highly recommend um, in the pool closest to the to the ocean with, with uh, I think it's an infinity pool. There is a little grill station there. They make burgers, quesadillas, uh, french fries, and a couple other things. Delicious for lunch. That was our favorite and the easiest because you can be hanging out at the pool, break away for a couple minutes, grab something to eat, and you could bring multiple plates back to your party. And it, it's just really the easiest way to go about it versus having to sit down in a restaurant. Um, so Friday rolled around. Uh, we were at the pool in the morning. Our guests started rolling in. We did have a lot of guest gifts. Um, and those gifts we personally gave out. So what we did was we created a WhatsApp chat 
so people can communicate freely without necessarily having to pay for an international phone plan. And people would just let us know because they came in in batches depending on where, where they were coming from in, in the United States. Um, and we would just meet them, whether it was at the front desk or the preferred lounge or whatever it was, and we would, you know, one by one give them their baskets, and that went pretty smoothly. We knew Friday wasn't going to be like 100% relaxation day, so we, we, we kind of expected this already. Um, so Friday went pretty smooth, and then, of course, you know, Saturday now we have rehearsal dinner. Our rehearsal dinner was at Rendezvous Terrace. Um, it was it was good. We had the uh, live performer. I cannot remember his name. He did the vi- What is his name? Daniel Bonilla. Daniel Bonilla. There you go. My wife is listening from the other room. Uh, and he was good. He he did his thing. Again, the only thing that I would suggest for future bride and grooms is all the little details, the flowers, the the music besides the DJ. Um, uh, the lights were actually another big part as well, but all the little details of like colors and certain upgrades, you and your wife or your wife and your groom, however you want to say, you're going to notice it and you're going to pay for it. Everybody else in your wedding party is, is not going to notice it whatsoever. So if you can save some money, I, I would suggest the lights were great, especially at Arbolito Beach. Um, the DJ is, is a huge plus because he kept the party going and, and, and everything. Uh, but every other little detail, not the biggest of things. So going back to Rendezvous Terrace, um, it was an okay venue. Again, not probably not my favorite. I really love that green space in front of the preferred lounge. I don't know what it's called. Maybe like the some kind of garden, whatever it was. Um but it was fine. Everything went smoothly. Um, by the way, our coordinator's name was Andrea. Um, she kind of walked us through it. She allowed us, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but she allowed us to change from rehearsal dinner to welcome party. Um, so we were able to have all our 50 guests. We did pay for it, um, but we just didn't want to have you know 25 people for two hours. Now we have our entire group and it was just um, open bar and or um, appetizers that were served. Um, so that was nice. And, um, you know, and then that concluded. Uh, I think like two or three nights we did go to the to the disco inside of the hotel. Um, that was fun. There wasn't too many people. Again, they have the bartender inside, normal size dance floor. Um, it was a pretty good time there. Um, as I'm going through, I'm going to try to give you guys little tips. Tip number one, and this is big. My, my wife told me this like five times already. Make sure to bring a lot of singles. A lot of singles. You are going to have to tip so many people at the property that we made the mistake. We, we brought tips, of course. We knew that we were going to have to tip. But we brought fives. And that was a big, big mistake because you're literally tipping somebody Every hour on the hour, whether it's a bartender, whether it's a server, whether it's somebody on a cart coming to pick you up. By the way, super convenient. The hotel is very, very large. So what they allow you to do is call concierge to have a golf cart come and pick you up and take you to your destination, especially for like dinner. You don't want to be sweaty and maybe you're tired from the day. The cart will come. It usually came within, I don't know, I want to say 10 to 15 minutes that guy has to get tipped. When you get towels, you might want to tip that person. So much, much easier to have a lot of singles and tip everybody, you know, $3 a person or, or whatever it is. Maybe if you're going to one bartender while you're in the pool, you give him a little bit more tip because you know that's your guy for the day or your guy for the week, whatever the case may be. Uh, touching on the pools before I forget. Uh, we went through rehearsal dinner, but let's go through the pools. So... Um, the best pool, in my opinion, is the infinity pool closest to the ocean. You get to hang out. There's the water view there. There is no bar, swim-up bar, that's attached to that pool. So you do have to come out and grab drinks, you know, at a different different location, whether it's within the, the pool next door, which has a swim-out, uh, swim-up bar, or the preferred. So here's the thing with the preferred. The preferred rooms are nice, especially the ones that are in building like 8A. I don't know what the other building was um, next to Arbolito Beach, but that was a nice one. You're directly on the water. 
just keep in mind with these two buildings, right? The location is great, but if there's a corporate event or if there's a wedding, you guys are not going to have peace and quiet in that room until the event is finished, which is typically like around 10 to 1030. So if you like to go to bed early, if some of your guests like to go to bed early, that might not be the ideal place for them because you are now going to be exposed to any parties that are happening on the beach, which again, end around 10, 1030. Um, so that's that. Where Now I lost my train of thought here. I'm going back and forth. So we have the singles. Okay, so we're back to the pool, the preferred rooms, or having access to preferred, right? They don't really check. <laughs> I know some people say preferred pool is for people that book preferred and preferred drinks. Or, mm, they don't really check at all, to be honest with you. I was never asked once what my room number was, if I'm in a preferred room, yada, yada, yada. The only time I was asked that question is when we went to din uh, when we went to breakfast and actually preferred breakfast, if you guys can remember this, is in the Italian restaurant. So they do take your room number down. But as far as getting drinks, I don't think we were asked once. But here's the inconvenient part. Unless I'm incorrect, and I'm pretty sure I'm not because we were there for 10 days. There's two preferred bars, right? One is in the preferred lounge where you checked in. And the other one is at the preferred pool which is not that close to it's probably the second furthest from the water so what that means is if you guys want preferred alcohol you will have to return to that preferred bar every time you get another drink now there are servers that go around and i don't know if all of them some of them especially if you tip them enough they will go and get those drinks for you and bring them to you but if you personally want to go and get a drink and you prefer preferred alcohol you are going to have to walk to the preferred pool to access that alcohol in that bar because the other bars obviously have alcohol, they just don't have the preferred. Also, right. the towels open at seven and- Yeah, so um, to, to get good seats, of course, you, you do wanna wake up early. I've seen a lot of comments on that. Um, the towels open at seven o'clock, so my suggestion, you know, if you can, for us, it was a nice time change uh we we weren't that tired we were like if we were waking up at seven realistically in florida it was nine o'clock um so it was ideal so we were able to get towels and all you do is you throw towels on a bunch of chairs uh maybe leave some sunscreen or something on the chair as well so nobody takes your towel and then those spots are kind of saved for you and you can go to breakfast and then you know uh return to your towels when you can um so that that pretty much sums it up with the pool um, the cabanas were nice. We did have the cabanas, I think like two or three days and different people rented the cabana. But what happens is the cabana is, as I'm sure you guys have seen, is this shaded large bed. Now the two, um, chairs next to it, it's not a chair, it's a lounge chair, um, are part of the cabana. So you cannot, uh, staff will come over and kick you out. Uh, if you did not pay for the cabana for that day, it's just the two chairs on the on the right of it. So what we did, because we had a group of 15, we kind of wanted everybody to mingle. We found a cabana and kind of, if you want to call it closed off that entire half of the pool because everybody put their towels around and then everybody got to mingle it was really nice. Um, so that's what we did with that. Now come wedding day. Again, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day was our wedding day. That was Sunday. My wife did not go to the pool at all. She started getting ready super duper early. I was hanging out at the pool pretty much all day until about 2 o'clock. Our photographer, which he is not a local photographer, I think I did a bunch of research. I have not got his photos back, so I don't really want to comment on, on the quality of his work. But I got to tell you, he showed up on wedding day at 1 p.m. And he stayed with us till about 11 p.m. Um, so we definitely got our money's worth. I mean, he wasn't cheap. I would say he was average with the pricing that I've been getting. We opted to not do the videography, just the photography. But there is still some videography that he's going to provide for us. Just not the entire wedding. I, we just didn't see the worth in that. So, um, yeah, me and the guys and a, and a bunch of the guests were in the pool probably till around two o'clock. 
at two o'clock, we went to the room to start preparing because remember, it's not necessarily about how long it takes for the groomsmen and, and the groom to prepare. It's the photography of us getting ready and, and being silly and, and doing whatever, taking shots, doing our thing in the rooms. Um, so we did that. And then now it's so 430 was when our ceremony was set to begin. The golf cart came and Andrea, our coordinator, uh, coordinated this. They came to pick the groom and the groomsmen up first, right? And that was around 4.15. So they picked us up in the car. Now, I had a jacket, um, no tie. I had a long sleeve button down, the pants, the shoes with no socks. My groomsmen just had the button down with suspenders. Um, so that was the look that we went for. So the golf cart picked us up, took us to Arbolito Beach dropped us off. I We noticed everything was being set up on the beach. As they started at like 10 a.m. probably, super duper early. Um, so we got to the beach. It was H-O-T exclamation point hot. I mean, it was very, very hot when the sun was up. So really good thing that I had my jacket on because it was the only thing that was hiding my sweat. I was completely and totally soaked underneath that jacket, but the jacket hit it really, really well. Um, so the guests started rolling in and then of course the, the bride and her bridesmaids came in right around that 430 marker. We had our ceremony, walked down the aisle. The only thing I can say about the ceremony, if you are getting married on the beach, I don't recommend doing the, the mat leading up to the aisle runner leading up to the altar. Um, it just looked a bit sloppy. I didn't think it was necessary. Um, I think walking on the sand would have looked a lot cleaner. Um, we didn't upgrade much when it came to the ceremony. We had the white chairs, which were really pretty. Um, our guests that were sitting um, just on the, the aisle runner, the, the walkway, they had flowers to throw at us after, after we were officially married. Um, and I'm sure you guys have seen pictures, and you can message me directly, and I will send you additional pictures. It, it was really, really pretty. My best friend Danny is the one that married us. So that all went super duper smooth. Now here, here is where one of the two major disappointments kind of, kind of happened. Um, Andrea, who was our coordinator, was very, very, very sweet. She really was. Um, she explained everything to us thoroughly from the moment we checked in. Uh, we actually met with her for the first time Friday morning. Remember, we checked in Thursday. Um, when it came to the wedding, we really thought she would be more involved, and she wasn't. Um, more involved, I mean, coordinating. So the ceremony is concluded. Now, you know, we walk down the aisle, people are throwing flowers. There's a gentleman waiting there with champagne for us and for everybody else to do a, to, to do a toast. Um, and then at that point, we start breaking off and our photographer is saying, okay, uh, friends and family, now family, now this group, now this group, photo, 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 photo. Um, and at a certain point, like cocktail hours now beginning, nobody was coordinating you know, to let our guests know, okay, you know, Sean and Natalie are now going for their photos. Everybody make your way to, to grab, you know, for a cocktail hour. Or after cocktail hour, okay, cocktail hour has concluded. If everybody can make their way to the reception to start, you know, taking your seats. Um, we were told by Andrea that our DJ was supposed to be coordinating that. Unless we didn't hear it, unless our guests didn't hear it either, uh, we did not hear anybody make that announcement. So everybody was kind of just figuring it out for their own. It wasn't the end of the world. Um, it still went pretty smoothly, but it, it just would have been nice for people to know, you know, and, and not only that, we had a really neat idea for our guest sign-in book. We had um, a Polaroid camera where you can kind of take selfies and make a little note underneath. We were, we had, um, we printed out a sign and put it in a, um, in a frame for people to know what to do but um we also told andrea to kind of help facilitate and and she she really did it so uh long story short we went for the photo photos they have to be unbelievable i mean the photos on the beach where especially as the sun starts to set it is really like the focal point it was it was absolutely breathtaking um so i'm really excited to see how the photos come out from the photographer um Yes, that's that's a big one. Brides. <laughs> she paid a lot of money for her dress. Trashed. Not from stains or anything, 
but just from the sand, from pulling from one place to another. I mean, absolutely trashed. Um, we may try to clean it, but when you've paid X amount of dollars for your dress already, uh, I don't know how much you want to pay to have it cleaned. Like, is your future daughter going to be wearing it? Are you going to try to resell it? How much can you get for it? Big question mark there. So, um, and it, yeah, it, it's just strictly from the sand. We, we didn't get it stained or anything. So at this point, we've finished our photography. Um, our guests are all seated. Uh, we had, it's so hard for me to explain. Again, if you want photos of our seating chart of, of the way our cocktail hour was set up or ceremony, just let me know. But we get to the, to the, to the area. Oh, by the way, we had the same gentleman that was playing for a rehearsal dinner. He was playing music during cocktail hour. We had the DJ for the ceremony, and then the DJ came back for the reception. So now the DJ's in the corner. Again, another disappointing part for us. We were kind of awkwardly waiting there <laughs> for him to be like, okay, welcoming back Sean Kaminsky, Natalie Kaminsky for their dance. We had practiced a dance, let me tell you, I don't know, three or four months. <laughs> to kind of perfect it as much as we can and hide our nerves. Um, so that that was a little awkward because there was definitely a good like 10, 15 minute break where we were just standing there waiting for him to make the announcement. So he finally did. We did our dance. We went to go sit down. People did their speeches. He did great. Um, our DJ did do a great job with mixing the music together. Everybody was pumped up. Um, Sir, uh, he did announce tables to go because we had the buffet. So he announced, you know, table one, your turn to go to the buffet, table two, table three. Uh, major, major hiccup in the wedding. Again, we went with the flow. Thank God things didn't get worse because they definitely could have. About 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes into our um, reception, we paid for a dance floor because you're on the sand. You probably want to get a dance floor. So I noticed when we first got on, there were certain parts that were, you know, they kind of looked like tape. I don't know. It, it was a little strange. So it started collapsing in multiple places. Um, so Andrea came up to me and my wife and, and it was the, seams the, the seams were coming apart. Let's, let's put it that way. So Andrea came up to me and my wife at this point. We are not too drunk yet, so good timing. Um, and she's like, listen, I could offer you two options. Option number one, everybody has to get off of the dance floor. It's going to take like an hour to two hours. We're going to repair it, blah, 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 blah. Or option number two is you just kind of make do and we'll give you a full refund for the dance floor. So we went with option number two. The dance floor survived the night. It, there was definitely some unbalanced areas it got a little bit tricky nobody got hurt they definitely could have because it was uneven in a lot of different places but it, it it was okay everything went good and then the rest of the night kind of went as smooth as possible we decided at the end of the night that her dress was so wrecked oh by the way my jacket came off as soon as the sun went down like i needed to to air out my body uh especially after a bunch of tequila shots and vodka shots that was not an issue at all for me um, but the rest of the night went really smooth, and then we paid for the extra hour for reception, so I believe we ended around 10, I want to say. Um, now our photographer came up to us, and he's like, guys, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to do a trash the dress in the pool? We said, hells yes. <laughs> so we went full force. She went with her dress. I went um, in my half suit because I didn't have my jacket on. Uh, we jumped in the pool. They got some great photography. And that was the end of that. Phenomenal memories. It was it was a great, great time. Hiccups along the way for sure. Like I said, nothing too major where, where it really affected either of us or of our or our guests. So just quickly, because I know this video is already a half an hour. I'm sure people are getting bored. But um, I can put this in very quickly here. The um, the next thing we did was so remember, wedding is on Sunday, March 17th. Now we're on Monday. The first half of the day, we're all hanging out, relaxing, drinking at the pool. She decided to get the the yacht for, for our guests. It was not cheap. I think we paid $2,600. Um, and we had a total of about 20 people that joined us on the yacht. 
Um, they didn't have the catamaran, which was a bit disappointing. That's what we really wanted. But the yacht was large. And it, it, it took off right from um, the pier, at, not the pier, the, the water at Dreams. Uh, that was about a three and a half hour ride. It was like a snorkeling and sunset sail combination. So I believe we left at three. We were back at six. Um, food for thought, guys. Temperature, super, super hot. Ocean water, super, super cold. There was nobody in the ocean. Like it was legitimately, I, I would have to guess, like high 60s because it's the Pacific Ocean. Um, so we did the sunset sail. We did four tours in total, right? Monday night is the first tour that I just told you about. Um, they were all unique in their own way. The only tour that we didn't do is fishing, which we kind of regretted. But at that point, we just, we were burnt out. So uh, sunset sail with 20 people, really nice, nothing too crazy. They had drinks, they had little appetizers. I think it was like chips and some kind of dip. Um, so that was that. Monday's now concluded. Tuesday, um, me and my groomsmen and their wives, and of course my wife, we did the ATVs with Julio. Um, Julio, by the way, was a super nice tour guide. A little bit difficult with communication, uh, so just be ready for that. But as far as the tours go and his friendliness and his kid is like the cutest kid of all times. <laughs> he came with us on the ATVs and the sunset sail. But ATVs was, I think, like a three-hour tour. We did it first thing in the morning, 8 to 11. 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, that's three hours. Um, and we just jumped around to different beaches. It was really scenic. It was really fun. Nothing too crazy with the ATVs. I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, and again, you're going with Julio. I think he actually owns the ATVs. So it's, it's, it's really organized. So now that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my wife and I decided that we wanted to do our own tours, just the two of us. Um, and that was incredible. So the two tours that we did, I always forget the name of the second one. Um, La Leona was, oh no, that was the second one. La Leona we did on Thursday. That was by far my personal favorite tour. Um, and the reason for that is La Leona, it, it's, first of all, you're going to see beautiful caves, beautiful waterfalls in caves. Um, and it, it's, it's just like, it's a really magical experience. And it's not like an easy, it's not a paved road. You have to wear wet shoes because you're going through rock. There's no fish. The guys were saying that there's some kind of mineral in the water where sea life cannot really exist. So you got completely clear. I mean, it was really an awesome experience. You should YouTube it because there's a lot of good videos that I have seen kind of showing you the experience that you'll have. The other one that we did, which was on Wednesday, was Rio Celeste. Rio Celeste, another unique tour. Um, the difference with Rio Celeste is you're going to see, again, you, can, you guys can YouTube it, you're going for one major attraction, which is the Rio Celeste waterfall and how it falls and creates this teal, teal colored water. And again, that's because of the minerals. We were told you're not allowed to go in, but we were told if you put it in your hands, uh, the water will, will be a completely different color. It's just the minerals in the water that are creating that teal color. Be warned for, um, my God, I keep forgetting the name. Be warned for real Celeste. Um, it is a hike, probably like 45 minutes to an hour through the rainforest. Not too hot at all. Again, we were in mid-March. Uh, the weather was quite nice. It rained in the rainforest, not at the hotel, for like five minutes. And it was a very light rain. But it is, once you get to Rio Celeste, to the waterfall, it's 2,000 steps down and then 2,000 steps up. So just be warned of that. Uh, from Rio Celeste, we went to the Sloth Sanctuary. We heard different opinions. Uh, for us, it was amazing. I mean, we got to see sloths. We got to see toucans. There was a couple snakes, um, really unique frogs and, and wildlife. It, it was a really neat experience. So we enjoyed that. So you go to Rio Celeste and then they take you to the sloths, which is like maybe 15, 20 minutes away. By the way, uh, Rio Celeste is about two hours from the hotel and uh, La Leona was about an hour and a half, hour and 15 from the hotel, just so you guys understand that. Um, the only other thing that I would highly suggest is for the tours, pay the extra money 
to do a private tour. Don't go with a large group. It, it makes a world of a difference. It's, it is more expensive. I think we paid like $250 a person for, for the waterfalls when it was just me and my wife. Um, but man, oh man, it's, it's, you have your driver. If Julio's not available, he gives you one of his guys. And it's just you, you can ask, hey, let's stop for breakfast. Hey, let's stop for souvenirs. Hey, this looks neat. Can we check this out? Like he, he's at your disposal. It's just super, super convenient. And when you get to the, they call them the parks, um, there's another tour guide that's with you that works at the park. Um, so you feel very safe. You feel very taken care of. These guys do these tours like two or three times a day, which is incredible because it's a lot of walking. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I think I mentioned everything. The cost of the catamaran was 2600 It was pretty expensive. The cost of the ATVs was very affordable. It was 110 per ATV. And if you don't feel comfortable, you know, driving and you're a passenger, it's 110 divided by two. So it's not per person, it's per ATV. The cost for the two waterfall trips was 250 a person. Again, definitely more expensive, but those private tours make a world of a difference. You're engaged with your tour guide. You're able to have the flexibility. Um, and that was it. So that was Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, I decided we're going back home on Saturday. Let's have a chill out day. Let's hang out at the pool. Let's enjoy our final day and get some sun. So we did that. And then Saturday, we checked out, went to the airport. That was a disaster with our flight. It was delayed and a lot of our guests had issues with flights, but that has nothing to do with the hotel. Um, but we were on our way home Sunday instead of Saturday, long story short. Um, so that was our trip. I mean, if you guys have any specific questions, I think I nailed everything in this video. Um, please let me know. But yeah, overall experience, again, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the professional photography. The photographs that our guests took and videos and put together were, it was breathtaking. It was, it was amazing from, from the sunset sail to the ATVs and the beaches that we stopped at to the water. I mean, the photos were just like life, life, lifetime memories and something to be nice to be shared with, with your current or future kids. Um, so that's everything in a nutshell. Again, my name is Sean Kaminsky. My wife's name is Natalie Kaminsky now. Um, I am a realtor in South Florida, guys. So if you, if you live in Florida, just as a side note, and you're looking to purchase a home or sell your home or maybe have a vacation home here, please feel free to reach out to me as well. Uh, I've been doing it down here for, for nine years now, and I cover Palm Beach County. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I live in Boca Raton, so I'm on the border of Palm Beach County and Broward County, but I won't get too far into that. So please let me know if you guys need my services for real estate. Please let me know if you guys have any extra questions about the hotel. I think I covered most of it at this point. So good luck. I hope this video helps you guys. Uh, tomorrow is Easter 2024. Uh, so happy Easter to all of you who celebrate. Thanks so much for listening.